I'm doing some flood repair work in this basement and I want to do it correctly, so I need to install a GFCI outlet on this circuit. These outlets are special because if they detect a leak in the current, they'll kill the power to the other outlets downstream, which prevents you from getting shocked. To get started, I'm going to flip the breaker so there's no power going to that circuit. Then I'm going to use a voltage tester to be absolutely sure there's no power. It's safe to touch, so now I need to figure out which one of these wires brings in electricity from the circuit breaker. In the back of the outlet box, I'm going to find yellow cables that bring in the individual wires. To show a better view, if I were to cut open one of these yellow cables, inside you would find a black, white, and copper wire. To find out which ones are bringing in power, I need to separate the wires by cable. There's going to be three groups of wires because I have three cables coming into my outlet box. If I follow the cables, I can see that two of them go to the other outlets in the room, but the third cable runs all the way to the breaker box. This means that the third cable is the one that's bringing in the power. I made sure that none of the wires were touching, then I turned on the power, and I was able to find the wire that was carrying power directly from the breaker box. Again, kill the power, and now I'm ready to install the GFCI outlet. For these outlets to work correctly, we have to identify which wires are bringing in power. The wires that bring in the power from the circuit breaker are called the line and they go in the slots here. The black wire goes on the hot side and the white neutral on the other. On the top it says load and this takes the power to the other outlets on the circuit. So to sum it up, the load carries the electricity it receives from the line. As I mentioned earlier, the white wire is neutral and it goes on the silver screws. Black is hot and it goes on the side with the brass or golden screws. The copper wire is ground and it goes under the green screw which is found on the bottom of this outlet. The end of the plastic on the old wire was scratched up so I need a clean connection so I'm going to strip the wires again. After I tighten it down I'm going to do a pull test to make sure it doesn't slip out. Now it is best practice and safer to hook up the ground wire first so make sure to install the ground copper wire first when you're hooking up your own outlet. The line wires are connected so next I need to install the load wires. To make it easier, I'm going to use these Wego 221 clips to do a pigtail on the load connection. These Wego 221s are much better than these push-in clips, which I never use, because they're junk. So I'm going to show you how they work. I clip the metal so it's not too long, open up the clips, then slide the two hot wires all the way in, and I make sure there's no exposed metal underneath. Only pair white to white, black to black, and copper to copper. Also do a pull test to make sure none of the wires slip. Once all the load wires are paired together, I can now do the pigtail. To do the pigtails, I need to grab 6 inches of wire for the neutral, hot, and ground. I'm going to prep the wires so I can connect to the Wego 221 clips. Then I'll connect the other end of the pigtail wire into the load slots on the GFCI outlet. You don't have to do a pigtail, you can directly connect the load wires to the outlet but the pigtail method works great if the wires are too short, or there's too many wires going into a box. For me, if there's three or more wires, I think a pigtail method is much easier to do. I have the outlet hooked up, so I'm going to finish mudding and painting the room. So one more time, I'm going to turn on the power, and give it a test to verify that it's working correctly. I like to use a level to get everything straight, then I'll tighten it down. And when I put on the face cover, I'm going to make sure the screws are aligned vertically. This GFCI outlet is now properly installed, so if there's a ground fault or problem in the current, it will interrupt the line power coming from the circuit breaker and will prevent that power from going down the load to the other outlets. And that will help protect you from getting shocked. I'll have links to the electric code and all the tools I use below this video. And if this video helped you, please go out and help someone else, because that's what it's all about. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.